we're going to try and take some pictures of the eclipse of 2017. I'm going to be using the Canon 80D and my daughter is going to be shooting on the Nikon D5000. Now we're complete amateur photographers and as it turns out in order to properly photograph the eclipse you need a lot of gadgets and gear. You need things like lens filters to filter out the bright sunlight. You need some heavy duty tripods to carry the weight of these lenses. Of course you need the goggles to protect your eyes. We picked up a couple of different varieties of that. And the other thing I wanted to bring with me was the GoPro just to capture that live action of whatever happens just in case I couldn't get any pictures off. It's a big challenge for us because we've never done anything like this before. So this is what I'm going to be taking with me with the hopes of getting that one great shot of the total eclipse. In part one of this special edition of Gadgets and Gear, we're just going to talk about the primary and the backup camera and lenses that we're going to use to shoot the great American Eclipse of 2017. Part two, which will be a second video, will talk about all of that other equipment that we had to bring with us. But for now, let's just focus on those cameras and lenses. My primary camera to shoot the Eclipse will be the Canon 80D. That's a 24.2 megapixel APS-C sensor, CMOS sensor. It's got auto exposure bracketing and I can shoot three up to seven shots automatically. Uh, with the Canon 80D, I can save my images in both JPEG and RAW and that's going to come in pretty handy when I'm still out in the field and I want to be able to transfer using the Wi-Fi to my phone and upload to social media with the JPEG. The only telephoto lens I had when I first hatched this crazy idea was the one that came in the kit. That was the 55 to 250 millimeter f4 to 5.6. Now I knew from experience when I was shooting full moons, it just didn't have that reach that I wanted. And you can see from some of those old pics on OPG's Instagram what I'm talking about there. I knew I needed a bigger, better lens for the job. The lens I will use is the Tamron. It's a 150 to 600 millimeter f5 to 6.3. They call it G2 Generation 2. And that on the front accepts a 95 millimeter filter, which we'll talk about later. That crop sensor size of the Canon and the 600 millimeter lens, it should be a good combination to get a pretty good frame image of the Eclipse. Close enough for the detail, but with enough frame to capture the full corona. And at least that's my understanding of how all this is going to work. Of course, there is a bit of a story of how I ended up with the Tamron glass. I really wanted to get a Canon lens, but it was over $2,000 just to buy into the lowest entry level. That was a 100 to 400 millimeter lens. And no doubt these Canon lenses are great, but for my like, skill level and that unlikely outcome of this Eclipse adventure, it seemed like I'd just be kind of throwing my money away on a nice Canon lens. But luckily the folks at the camera shop had some alternatives that were almost half the price. They showed me a couple of lenses from Tamron and Sigma and while those lenses were still a huge investment, it was what I felt much more appropriate for my amateur photography status. So both the Sigma and the Tamron lenses seemed, they, they seemed great to me. I was really only interested on how the camera would work out at that 600 millimeter focus. I didn't notice any weird like autofocusing issues or vignetting uh, around the edges from my short time with both lenses attached to my camera at the store. But I'm sure there is very good reasons why these lenses are so much cheaper. But in the end, I went with the Tamron lens. And it was just a perception thing. I had the perception that it was a little better uh, over the, the uh, Sigma. It was somewhat sealed against the weather. It appeared to be a little bit better constructed and it had a few more features like the lens lock and it just overall seemed to be a better bargain than the Sigma. A couple of the other customers in the store they kind of had the same opinion. I also picked up a UV filter and honestly that was more just for the dust or the scratch protection of the lens than for any other reason. And no the camera shop didn't try to sell it to me, try to push me to buy one. I have some kind of a, of a filter on all my other lenses and I just thought for the price I'm paying for this thing I just wanted that peace of mind. So I took that Tamron lens home. Let's go take a quick look at the unboxing of this beast. So I got the lens home and let's go through an unboxing just so you can see what comes with the package and I'll give you some initial impressions. I did buy a lens filter, a UV filter, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But let's get into the box. 
I'm gonna speed this video up in a, in a second here because some of this is just not that exciting. I think this was the first product that I ever bought that wasn't completely taped down. The hardest thing was getting it out of the bag. I do like how things are packaged and I appreciate the quality and the Tamron lens was really no exception. It came with a packet of instructions and there was also this great felt carry bag. The lens itself was protected by this molded plastic and wrapped in foam and an additional plastic bag with some of that dry absorbent stuff in it. it came with a really big sunshade which was cool and I didn't expect that. And it was also wrapped in an anti-static bag. The lens was pretty heavy and that was one of my initial impressions. And the sunshade was pretty big. It just adds to the length of this lens. Like I said, the lens was really a lot heavier than I thought. Front side 95 millimeter lens cap that would support a 95 millimeter filter. And it did have two mounting holes on the mounting bracket. The bag is just a typical bag. It's got a little cardboard protector on the bottom. There's also an adjustment wrench and the safety screws. That's how you tighten up the mount, the mounting bracket on the bottom of the lens. And then of course there's the whole packet of instructions and safety warnings written in a multitude of different languages. Warranty cards, a little Adobe Creative Cloud ad, and then the instructions are the owner's manual in several different languages. Once again, for an old Pong geezer, it's written in a microscopic thing you can't, you can't even read. And then I did buy this ProMaster HGX Prime UV filter, just for my own peace of mind. And there you have it. This was the lens that I was going to use to hopefully photograph the Great American Eclipse of 2017. My secondary, or backup camera, will be the Nikon D5000. My daughter will be operating this one. It has a 12.3 megapixel CMOS sensor, and while the camera is capable of bracketing, that's like auto exposure bracketing, it can only fire three shots via continuous burst setting, and it can be used with a time delay. But since this is the secondary camera, we're just going to go with something basic, just a single shot. The camera can save images in JPEG and RAW, but again, for this camera, we're just gonna shoot JPEG. The Nikon will be paired with a Nikkor 55 to 200 millimeter f4 to 5.6 lens. This lens will not provide that full frame close up of the eclipse, but it should work. If we can find a location with a tree or a structure, a barn, a windmill, something, this configuration might give us some site location context. However, the eclipse won't occur until almost noon in Nebraska. So it's going to be really challenging to find a site suitable for that kind of landscape composition with this shorter lens. So we're just going to have to do the best we can when we get there. Now the Nikon D5000 came out in 2009. So naturally we're not expecting this pro level artistic greatness here. The camera does have a swivel view screen so that's a plus, especially with that high angle that we're going to have to shoot. But hopefully we're going to pick up a few good images. More importantly, this will allow my daughter the opportunity to actively participate with me in this crazy picture taking event. So this ends part one of our special gadgets and gear episode devoted to the equipment we are using on our adventure to witness the great American eclipse of 2017. Follow Old Pong Geezer on Instagram to see what the old geezer's up to in between these YouTubes. Tap that like button if you think we're going to make it, or even if you think we're going to crash and burn on this. Please subscribe to catch the rest of this adventure and many more to come. Most of all, take care of your gear. Make this your day. Live your adventure. OPG, out.